Notes is another video in the series on using Notability. And this video will look at how to create a note and use the typed note. You can create notes and either handwrite notes, type notes, or combinations of both. But this video will just concentrate on the typing ones. So I open Notability, and I already have some folders set up in Notability. And wherever you want the note to appear is where you select the folder. So if I wanted to, the note to appear in using Safari, then I would create the note within that category. At the moment, I'm going to put it into sharing files on the iPad, and that will be inside the uh, subject sharing files on the iPad, and that's within the category iPad Advanced. So if I tap that up, there is one subject within that folder, iPad Advanced, and there'll now be one note. Uh, before you create a note, then go into the settings where you can set your default text setting. So at the moment, mine set it noteworthy. So I'm going to change that one and take it back to, say, Gil Songs. And I want it to be uh, blue and size 20. If I wanted to make it bigger, tapping the capital A will make the size bigger. Tapping the uh, lowercase, smaller A will decrease the size and in can have bold italic or underline. So it gives you a sample of the body text and I can do that for the captions and maybe make the captions red and a bit smaller and bold. The title font can be blue with a different font perhaps. So you just got to experiment with that. You've got more fonts there that you can select and pick a font that you like. One more setting that you might check is the default note title. And at the moment, the base note name will be test note. Now I might change that to just note. And it'll give me a date and a time. I probably don't want the time, so I might turn that off. And at the bottom there, that's what the note default note will look like. So I can go back to that. Done. Create a note, a new note. And it gives you the default note, which is what we've just done, the date and the name. It's in the default font that I set in the settings with the default color. This is the subject that the note has been created in, sharing files on the iPad. So you can check again if it's not in the right place. You need to go back and put it into a different folder. And it also gives you a base up here, a date and a time. And if you tap on that, can actually change the date and time. If I can get it to stop there. So it's currently today's date and, date and time, but you can change it there if you wanted to, to alter that date. The toolbar at the top gives you the different options for the types of notes. So this video is all about typed notes. And so to type, you need to type the T. This one is for handwritten notes. This one is for highlighting. This is the eraser, and this will cut text. So at the moment, this video is all about type text, so we need to tap the T. And then tap anywhere in the screen to bring up the keyboard. And some of the toolbar settings here. There are some presets here, A, B, and C. And you can set up the presets with specific fonts, colors, styles that you like. So if I tap and hold the C, I've set that to be the chalk duster font, red color, size 20 and no no bold italic or underline so if i if i wanted to use that set of presets then i would select the c as you can see i have already and it's it's changed everything to those presets there the chalk duster and the red and the size etc and then everything i typed is now in the chalk duster font so at the moment hold tap and hold the b B is just the default Gil Sons. Picking a different font might make it noteworthy, so it's like a more of a handwriting and make that blue. And stop. So now you notice the the defaults there. That's what it's going to be typed in. So if I type something there now, this is noteworthy. So you can change the fonts and then you can mix between the presets as you're typing your notes. Uh, and if I want to go back to the, the normal one, I might have that as, a, as, a, as an A. It's gone back to it there. 
A is gil sign, so A is the normal preset. So if I type something now, this is the default text. Now, other things that it has here, it's got some indenting text, indent. So if I want to press return and indent the text, uh, and if I tap this little button here, this one, it's going to indent that text. So I can do it again. More indenting. Indenting. Or dent even further, it'll go back the other way, that way. By pushing this one. So it's indenting. There's also over here lists. So if I wanted to do a numbered list, I'll do cats. Make that a numbered list behind it. Dog, bird, that becomes a, a numbered list. And it will continue to be that because it's already highlighted. You can see it's highlighted there. And if I want to turn that off, just hold it and it will go back to normal. There's no lists. If I want a dot point list, tap the, the dot point. When you look at it, you can see that's it's got a shaded colour there, so it's now in dot point. Turn off the dot points. Um, there's a spacing, so this one's double spacing here as well. Um, so you can you can type, and it will pick up uh, typing mistakes and uh, correct them for you. So let's just do a deliberate error. This is some typed text with the familiar underlined red. A line to indicate there's a typing mistake there. If I tap and hold over that, I can select, and I just want to select that word, and then I have the options coming up. I can cut it and copy it and paste it, replace it. If I tip replace, it'll it will give me some options, which none of which are correct because I want it to say T Y P E D, so it doesn't help. Or I could, if I hold it down again, select, learn. Learn will take that word and add it to the dictionary. So it now thinks that typed is spelled correctly. Now it's not, and none of the options that, that it gave me were, were right. So all I want to do there is uh, deselect that. I'll use the magnifying glass to just move the I and put the Y back in. And then the full stop works the same as all the keyboard functions on an iPad does. The same things, copy, cut, replace, all of those work. If I wanted to paste some text, I went out of this app and into notes. And there's some text in here. So if I highlight that and select it all and copy it, then go back into notability, into that same note, I can hold that down and paste in that text. Changing the color. So I hold it down, select, select by dragging the, the handles, the whole um, sentence, and you can change the colour. So I might like to have that green and bold. So you can change things on the fly. You don't have to stick with the same presets that you're used to. As well as typing notes, there are other things that you can do with the typed note. And this also applies to handwritten notes. In the plus up here, you can use a photo that is already in your camera roll, or you can actually take a photo and take notes around it. So let's just pick take a photo. And I'm going to take a picture of the cat that's just having a sleep next to me. And I want to use that photo. So it puts the photo in, I can hold it down and move that around. And I get those uh, options. I'm going to have it wrap the text. Or I can move it over here so the text wraps. Uh, I can cut and copy and delete with the blue handles. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can add a caption. Like that. And remember in the settings previously we actually put in the default font size, colour and style for that caption. You're going to go back to the, the settings and change that. What else can we do? I can take a, a clip from a web page. So going into search for something, pick a website, 
and it can take some of the page from that. Uh, I can take the whole thing. So done. We'll take that whole web page and put that web page inside the note where you can have, you have the same options. You've got the cut, copy, delete, edit, etc. Adding a caption. So you maybe put the actual website's address so you know where you got it from. And then you can type, type around that. You can change it within a sentence and you can add certain things from the plus menu. A sticky is a sticky note, so maybe I want to have a uh, lined sticky note and that will put that there. I can just keep moving it down until I get it in the place I want it to go. Uh, as we get into more and more pages, I'm sort of now into page two because you can see over here there's a little guide there. Two pages. If I want to go back up the page, I need to use two fingers to scroll up. Uh, if I was in handwriting mode, one finger would start like this. It has now. Using one finger, it actually thinks you're writing. So you need to use two fingers. So the eraser will get rid of that, those notes. Two fingers will let me scroll up. Holding that down, I can move it around. The only thing you can use a sticky for is to, to write my name in it, is to handwrite within it. It doesn't seem to let you type. Um, and I can... Uh, put borders around and change colours and you can have a combination of handwritten notes and type notes using two fingers to go back up and down the page. I go back to the T. Um, what else have we got there? So you've got stickies. Um, there is, and there's different types of, of formats within those. So you can have a grid, you can have blank, you can have lines, etc. Of an existing photo, it's going to take you out to your um, photo roll, camera roll. So if I went into here, picked a photo, so I'd only use this one, and it'll insert the photo, and you get the same sort of options. Holding down the blue handles will let you make it bigger, smaller, and with the finger, just moving it around to where you want it to go. Uh, editing it, you can actually go into a uh, photo editor primitive one but you can crop it so there's a, a little bit there I can crop off the white borders out of that picture before I use it and then done and put the picture back in so any picture that you have if you want to crop it you can let's pick another one uh, or take another photo of the cat that's sitting here and just see a face and use that and that will insert that picture. Move it around. Now, I don't particularly want it all, so I'm going to edit that and go into the photo editor and crop out just that bit I want. And then done. There's an awful lot of combinations you can do within the type notes. Uh, and you can do handwritten notes in combination with type notes. So if I wanted to suddenly do some handwriting, I can switch to the pencil, hold that down to get a different thickness and colour, so I might do red, and uh, perhaps this thickness, small, quite small, and either using a finger or a stylus, you can actually write on the screen. So this is my cat. And there are other ways to control the size of your handwritten notes, and that will be in, in video number three in the series, actually, how to use, to do handwritten. Uh, what else have we got? We've got figures. So you can select different things that you want to put into your notes. So if I wanted to put in a square, I can then draw that square uh, and done. Now that will put a square on the page, and then inside that square, I might actually just tap away out of it, I can then write inside that square with my finger, erase it, if I don't want that. I don't think I can actually type inside it though. It won't actually let me do that. So it's really only for handwriting to actually put information inside a square. If you wanted to emphasize some text, you could actually draw a line around it. So instead of uh, putting this web 
page, this web page here, into a, a text box, I could just switch to the pencil, change to the colour, maybe make it a bit thicker, put it green, and draw one myself. Like a, draw a line around it. You have to experiment with the size and thickness and making sure it was straight, but you can emphasise things that way. The wrench gives you different size paper. So if I wanted to select a different texture, the whole background would change to that texture. This note is now one of four pages. And on the, the right over here, you can see it's on, I'm on page one of four at the moment. So I can either, with two fingers, scroll through the different pages of the notes, or I can tap the arrows to get me through back and forward through the pages of the different notes. Or on the multi-page view, it shows you all the pages on the right-hand side where you can easily switch between each one. So I'm on page two at the moment, indicated by that blue thick line. Uh, tap to go to page one. Now I can create bookmarks and, and use the bookmarks as a means of filtering out pages. So a bookmark is simply put, tapping a, a page on page two. Tap the bookmark to create the bookmark. Then when I want to look at all the pages, if I only want to look at the bookmark pages, I just tap the, the bookmarks and it will just show that. If I want to show all the pages, the white one, all pages, or I can search for a page. And I can search for probably some text in a page. Uh, let's just search for a um, a word. So search for noteworthy. So search for noteworthy. It actually brings up the page where that word will be. Noteworthy and highlights it for you. So it's the, uh, the searching and the sorting and the filtering. That's the only way you're going to be able to do it. Then the, the books to, to hide that again. Um, make sure you've changed the title of your notes. So this one's called Practice Notes. So you can change it by tapping in there. And the cross will delete whatever's there. And I can just put in something else, Test Note. Uh, to go back to the menu, it's the uh, left arrow, navigation arrow there. And... Uh, the test note is sitting there within the sharing files on the iPad subject. And what you can do from there is either export the note. So if I wanted to, to send this note to share, I have to select the sharing button first, highlight the note, tap it again, and then I can either email the note to myself or send it off to one of the cloud services or print it or open it in another app, whichever I want to do. So if I wanted to send that to Google Drive, I can tap Google Drive. I want to send it as a, a PDF, and that's selected. Go back. Uh, I can select the folder I want it to go into, uh, and the only folder I've got is this one. It's really not suitable, but it'll do. So I want to export to the photos and then send that to Google Drive, that note. If I wanted to back it up, um, I could also have Auto Sync turned on, and it'll sync it to one of the cloud services also. Once the file's been sent, you can check it. I've got Google Drive on the iPad uh, somewhere. There. It's been sent into Google Drive into the Photos folder. And there's the test note there. You can open it from here as a PDF. And from there, do what you wish with it. So there's the, the note that we did save as a PDF and it's probably a good idea to do that anyway to save it uh, as a PDF into another service as a backup. The, uh, the next video will look at how you actually create notes using the handwriting tool and uh, various options about importing PDFs into Notability and using handwriting to annotate and edit them.